Hello, family. This morning, I'm just getting over some news that sad to me. It was about a relative of mine who was four months pregnant, and they're about to do a gender reveal. Found out two days before the event that the baby had no heartbeat. We stood in faith and believed that the Lord can turn things around and bring life to this child. I even received the rhema during the Lord's Supper about Elijah waking up the dead boy and about Jesus passing the widow and her son who was dead at their funeral and Jesus resurrected him. So I just knew and believed that God would do the same. I did struggle with this belief at times, wondering, Lord, what is your will? I don't want to get my hopes up and be disappointed because I know the Lord allows suffering. However, others around me really want fire and faith, decreeing and declaring, so I began to do the same, as I felt my faith was being stirred up again, to rather believe for joy than a momentary trial and suffering, which I'm accustomed to. Then I got the call that the baby came out, and it was stillborn. I became despondent as I moved over in my mind how many times I'd believed, but rather met with the opposite of what I was praying for, and was asking the Lord how contradictions can build our faith because now I feel really weak in faith. Then here, there's much conflict views concerning the Israel and Palestine war. There's so much tearing down of Israel as the news and clips continuously show babies, mothers, and children being harmed in Palestine, which demonize Israel even more. And here at home, there's such strong opinions against Israel. I feel saddened by some of the images of what I was shown, but I learned to be quiet. and was just trusting what the Lord told me concerning what is really going on and that he's in the middle of everything. But again, my faith has become wobbly by what I was hearing and the opinions of others wondering if I got it right with the message. I came before the Lord, good morning. Jesus began, my heart is moved to pity for you and all my brides. I have great compassion for you all in all your trials and sufferings. Some are being called to carry heavier burdens than others, but even the most acute suffering of the soul I have great compassion for. Nothing is wasted, my beloved brides. I mean nothing. There's so many souls in need of grace and mercy in this hour. So many, beloved one. That is why I'm asking for much more. Do not be moved by the horrendous things being said about Israel in the news. War is terrible to me. Know that. I don't desire it, nor is it the way I intended for men to resolve conflict. This came from Abel and Cain, the first time the sin of murder entered into the heart of men, and has increased ever since. Even now, more so for the fulfillment of prophecy and the end to come. All nations will rise against Israel, surrounding her with such hatred. Do not be moved when that time comes. But what is going on is preparing the ground for that. In Zechariah 12, verses 2 to 3, Behold, I'll make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding people. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day, when all the nations of the earth gather against her, I will make Jerusalem, a heavy stone for all peoples, all who would heave it away will be severely injured. And even one of my relatives, her son is named Israel, and her spouse was so angered at what was going on that he demands that they change their son's name. My goodness. I said, Lord, I'm saddened by all the death, Lord, the babies and the sick of the children. Jesus responded, I am too, beloved. But you must remember, I don't see death as you see death especially the innocent ones. They return back to me, their maker, returning from which they came from. Not only do I redeem them, but many graces are unleashed on earth for their loved ones' salvation. In this hour, many souls will return to me because of the death of their loved ones. Pray for the hardened hearted ones and the rebellious ones to respond to the grace of salvation when it comes. Yes, Lord, I'm also saddened by the death of the baby. I was talking to you in the bathroom about how my faith has just been a bit shot. As an aside, one of the intercessors had a message, and within the message they questioned why many in the group seemed afflicted, burdened by suffering and continuous oppression. This was the second time an intercessor made a similar comment. She was coming from a Protestant background. Coming from a Protestant background myself, you are taught to speak in faith, declare in faith, decree and believe it. There's no room that something bad, suffering, or even death can be the will of God. No. <laughs> I know the answer as Jesus has told us time and time again, hard dwell as we are his bride. We're wounded lovers and we consent to these crosses. More importantly, suffering is actually good for us. Despite what we think, it conforms us to the image of Christ and allows us to truly become his brides 
the one he returns who looked just like him. And lastly, we now know that true faith is seeking God to do his will. Not what we want or we think is right for us, whatever the will of God is. And many times he allows these things so we can trust his will. Too many times our flesh and the natural eyes, you see oppression and suffering as an indicator something is wrong, when rather is that you're doing something right. Rather is that you're doing something right and receiving opposition. And also the Lord is testing your faith and it can become means to our salvation. Well, beloved, your faith is actually growing leap and bounds, Jesus chimed in. I thought, really, Lord? I'm not stepping out to heal people or pray for people as I should. I feel so lukewarm. Jesus responded, well, I don't want you to strive, beloved. Just be my bride and child. I'll begin to blow on the embers of your heart during this trip as you water these gifts and you see my hand move through you and your beloved to bring healing and deliverance to many. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the absence of things not yet seen. And as a side family, Father Derek's faith is really refreshing to me. He doesn't see suffering the same as we have been taught. And I realize all my trials have burdened me and made me war-torn rather than having childlike faith. I just tend to think a cross is coming rather than consolation. And it's true, many times it usually is the case. Father Pio once said, in order to attract us, the Lord grants us many graces that we believe and can easily obtain heaven for us. We do not know, however, that in order to grow, we need hard bread, the cross, humiliation, trials, and denials. I think many of us can lose sight of that, that we're being matured, especially as heart dwellers. Jesus has matured us greatly, but the faith is not decreeing, declaring God's word, but it's rather believing even when you don't see. It's simply submitting to the will of God. Help us, Lord. You have faith to believe the best for your relative and her child. And you prayed what you felt was my will. Most importantly, you prayed my word and believed, and for that it was counted to you as righteousness and faith. Although it was my will to take him home, your faith has not diminished. I understand your disappointment, but I work all things out for your good, for those who are called for my purpose. Baby Oziah served his purpose, and I will restore your relative's health in order to sustain another child, but she must take her health more seriously. Thank you, Lord, as I pondered on what he was saying. Then I remembered a testimony video I watched and cried, so inspired by this woman's faith and so empathetic towards her pain. She had four children, three boys and one girl, a single mother who was Asian and Christian. Her first child was found to have cancer. He was mid-twenties. They fasted and prayed, even documented his journey in hopes he would be healed, but he died. She was devastated only to find out the second born now had the same cancer at the same age or of her oldest son, after some time of his death. They fasted and prayed, recorded his journey on video, believing for healing, and he died. The last son decided to take preventative caution to eat healthy, taking vitamins to ensure that he wouldn't get cancer, and he got it, at the same age as his elder brothers. They stood in faith, and this time the woman cried out to God to not take her last born son. As she was being interviewed, she cried remembering the pain as they showed the video footage. He was, even engaged, he was even engaged to be married and got married in the hospital, but he died. To watch the suffering was heart-wrenching. Trying to understand God in all of this was thought-provoking, but at the end of the video, full of tears running down her face, she said she never lost her faith. It was tested, but she knew God is faithful. She still believes and will serve him, although it wasn't his will to keep her children alive. She knows she will see them again. And now she'll enjoy the rest of her days with the only child which has left her daughter. I thought, wow, now that is faith. Jesus continued, The greatest faith is when a soul believes despite seeing. You have conveyed this before when the story of the mother who lost all her sons continued to have faith when met with such grievous trial. You cried and were inspired and in awe at her faith because that is faith in action. Despite her cries to me, her prayers, and her pleas, she submitted to my will upon taking each of her children, and has not lost her faith in me. For that she will receive a crown of faith. It is easy to believe, to be excited, to be inspired when you pray, and it is done. But in this hour, I'm stretching the faith of my faithful ones, teaching and equipping you to fight the good fight of faith, which has not been taught as much as I have desired in my church. That type of faith will be needed for the things that will take place upon this earth soon. For as the scripture says, men's hearts will fill them. 
Luke 21, verses 25 through 27. And there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and upon the earth the distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and waves roaring, men's hearts filling them for fear, looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. My bride's hearts will not fail, but will be steadfast in faith, because I have believed despite all the suffering trials, death and decay that will surround them. They will not lose hope, but look to the hills in which their help comes from. I am going the faith of my faithful. And that was the end of Jesus' message. Well, thank you, family, again for your support and donations towards us to make all of that, all that the Lord wills possible. We are very low on donations because we had to make big purchases for the city of God to help us to start farming when we come back. Janavi and Pastor Joseph in India are much needed of donations for our mission trip to support and help buy clothes, food, hotel stay for pastors, groceries to help poor families. They need about $3,400. And please don't forget to support the medical outreach we're raising for the street boys. We've only received two donations, which have come up to $50. Please remember us. Remember these needs. You can donate via PayPal or GoFundMe link below. God bless you, family, to the next message.